It's better for the speakers if everybody moves forward and stays warm. Can we have a big round of applause for the, uh, the Damons who've just played for us, please? Get on, get on this. Wow, it's great, great to see so many faces here. So my name is Steve Orman. I'm a, I'm a local resident. I'm part of the local Frat Free community and Frat Free D and the local Labour Party. The Frat Free D um, organisation, which has helped uh, get this event going today, it's a, a tremendous organisation which brings all the local campaign groups together and has played a huge part in getting the rally going. So could you give them all please a round of applause on what they've achieved today? Uh, some practical information, there are toilets available just to the right hand side if anybody needs them. Um, there are various stalls around, anti-fracking stalls and various campaigns. Um, there are also food stalls, both sides here, so, so please make use of them. Um, today is about bringing together our local communities and representatives to unite against fracking. It's time for the government to stop and listen instead of riding roughshod over our community's wishes. It has been shown time and time again that we do not want and will not accept fracking either here or anywhere else. <laughs> Frack off. <laughs> Before I introduce the first speaker, I would like to urge people to do four things. Number one, Visit the Frack Free stands and give them your support and details. We can only stop fracking through communities coming together. Number two, object to the latest planning applications in Asmia Port. Again, see the Frack Free D stand. Number three, support our representatives who oppose fracking. This is, this is something which will affect generations to come and it's up to us to make a stand now. So please support those who are opposing fracking. Number four, enjoy yourselves and give yourself a pat on the back for your magnificent support. So now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, which is, um, which is Jed. Jed's worked tirelessly from the outset in setting up the Ellesmere Port Frat Free Group in the town, along with many others. He has also supported the anti-fracking movement at the site near Blackpool and around the region in general. He is committed to environmental issues, is a member of the Green Party, Unite Community and he cares passionately about the local community. Please give him a round of applause. Hi, hi guys, hello. Uh, welcome to Ellesmere Port, those uh, from outside the area in there. Thanks everyone for coming, it's brilliant to see so many faces. Uh, it really has ma uh, made my day, uh, just, just seeing so many here, so that's really cool already. Um, uh, oh, sorry, um, I'm hoping there's some here who are here to find out and learn about fracking, um, because it's great we've already got a community that's built up over the last three years, uh, support the anti-fracking movement and stuff, but we need to get a word out to a wider audience. I'm hoping there's some are here who are here to find out. Thanks very much. I'm not going to go into the details of fracking, hydraulic fracturing, what the actual process of it is. There's stalls back there, uh, the Frack the Free D stall. You can get some information. Come and talk to me later, talk to any of the organisers, the, the, the guys in the high vis and stuff. They know what's going on. They can give you the information, explain why we're so passionate and so worried about what's happening uh, and what can happen to our environment. Um, so why are we having this rally at Ellesmere Port? Um, well, iGas, the company that wants to frack, wants to extract this gas um, in this area, they've put a planning application in uh, for the Merseyton Road site, uh, what they call Port Side. So it's by the port, um, but down by Merseyton Road. Um, but opposite Bessford Adams is where the actual site was. They were there three years ago. Um, they drilled then a, a test drill where they had um, permission to extract coal bed methane. 
Uh, that you'll find is around about 900 metres uh, in, into the ground, and that's where they should have drilled to, to get a core sample. They actually went down nearly um, two kilometres to uh, get to the shale rock. They took a shale rock sample, um, they've evaluated that and say that there's, there's gas trapped down there. And what they want to do is they want to come back and do what's called a flow test. And this is where they will agitate the rock, they will um, break the rock, so they will release some of that gas. They'll find out uh, how much gas is down there to evaluate the, the worth of it, really. Um, now, when they do that, they will be burning off that gas. They won't, they won't be keeping hold of it. Uh, they won't be using it for uh, gas or uh, central heating or anything. They're just going to burn it off in a, in a stack for about 88 hours. The particles and the... Um, environmental damage will already start just with that process that they want to start by doing that. Now, um, there's also uh, locally here, we've got um, its marshes being scoped by iGas. They could well be planning on doing a full frack there. Um, so it's another thing that we're concerned about. So, yeah, it's been three years since Ellesmere Port Frack Free started. Um, I became involved in the campaign then. I'm a local. I, I live around here. I've worked for 20 years in this town. Um, I may look like one of those hippie, jobless uh, activists that you see on the news and stuff, but no, I'm a local. I care about my home. I care. I know that you probably all care about your homes and where you live. For me, the environment we live in is our home. Our home is our environment, and it, it's what we're, makes me passionate about protecting it. Um, so three years ago, I was part of the camp uh, that lived on the roundabout there. You, some of you may have drove past and thought, what are they doing living with tents on a, on a roundabout? Well, we were caring. We were, one, we were worried about the, the environment, and we wanted people like you to know what was happening. And it wasn't getting out there in the, in the general media. We had to do something that was active, that was visible. So we went out and did something like that. Um, now, what that did, uh, it created a community. Um, we, and, and once we got that community to engage with what fracking is, they Googled fracking, do your own research, you know, check it out, find out what it is, and you will say no. You'll say no, this isn't happening, we can't be doing this. We'll be so, we'll, you'll say no because of our environment for the children. Lancashire have said no, and they fight against fracking. North York, that's. North Yorkshire have said no, and they're fighting against fracking. Um, and I've said the wrong Yorkshire there, haven't I? <laughs> no. Anyway, no, we're all communities up and <laughs> down Yorkshire, the country are saying no, and, and that's having an effect. It's starting to be heard. Um, you know, it's something that's important to highlight. This campaign, this fight against fracking, um, it's community-led. Um, we're going to hear from some of our politicians in a bit. We've got Justin here, uh, Rebecca Long Bailey, um, and Mike Atherson. Atherson. Mike um, you know, and and it's great that they've come on board and they are fighting this campaign. Um, and it's really important we listen to what they have. They're, they're them talking about the concerns, but we had to make them listen first. It's not just about fracking that we have to do that. As a community, we have to do the things to make the change. Be it with the homeless issues, housing, fighting for our NHS, it's about community first. If the community step up and make a change, we can get our polit political parties to do the same. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but we have to be passionate about that. And you might guess that I'm kind of passionate about this, that's why I went and lived on a roundabout. It's really important that we're passionate about making change. And, and there's a really great anyway group of people in Cheshire sure doing that. They're passionate about making a change. Uh, um, Steve uh, mentioned them before, Frack Free D, and all the small groups like Frack Free Upton, uh, Frodsham, uh, Hellsby, all have got little community groups starting together, get together, and, and they work They work to try and stop what the plans have been from these uh, gas companies. Um, yeah, so... I mentioned the planning application uh, that ICAS have applied for Merseyton Road. Um, and a few years ago, that kind of thing, none of us would have known about what happened. Three years ago when we were protesting then, it was already, the planning permission was already given. It had been handed out, signed away, no one knew what was going to happen until 
a small group of people realised that it, it, it was happening and people started getting together. This time, with this planning application, we had people watching what was happening, what applications were being put through, and we had people going to the site in Merston Road and walking past, walking the dog. It's a bit of cul-de-sac, no one ever goes down there, you'd never know anything was happening. But a little A4 notice was put outside and it, it was this planning application. And we, we did our research, checked on the council site and we, we found out about it. So it's important that what happened three years ago created this community, this community that cared. And we need more of you. We definitely need more of you helping. Um, so now we've got people scouring the application and its related documents, asking questions of the council officials as well as other stakeholders like United Utilities. It's that type of work, that dedication, uh, that direct action by community members that, that starts the process that slows everything down for these gas companies. It costs them money, it's time delayed, it's the shareholders that think, we don't, we don't want to get involved in that, the community aren't happy with it, they're, they're, they're stopping it in every step. And all that, it, it, makes, it, it makes it harder for them. Um, one of the things that we've uh, noticed uh, at the port side is there's no environmental impact test being done. And this is a site that is a few hundred yards away from people's properties. Um, there's plenty of homes within a mile, two miles of a radius of where that site is, and no environmental impact test. They don't know how this operation will affect the environment we live in. So we've actually um, applied to the Secretary of State. We've appealed and said that we think there should be a environmental impact test on this. Now, he'll make his decision. And in the, in the meantime, that means that the planning office haven't made a decision on this application. It's given us more time. It's given us more time to make objections. And that's what we need. And that's what we need people here today to make sure that they've done is placed objections. Um, it's really important. Again, go, go over to the front free um, stall over there. And there's uh, forms that you can sign. And it's basically to, to object to the planning application that's currently in place. I guess have made, made this application. It has to go to the planning office, so if we object to it and we get enough objections, the planning office are going to think, well, yeah, this community don't want this happening. We can hope that is the decision that they will make. Um, even if they do that, I guess will appeal. That will know, they'll, they will appeal it, they'll say, oh, no, no, we, we, this is really important, this has to go ahead. And then we'll be in a process where we'll have to um, go to a potential uh, judicial review or a, it's a, um, that appeal. By placing all these objections, there's two ways that that, um, that appeal can go. It can be just decided between emails about different parties um, and then... Stop doing that, you put me off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yes, yeah, so doing the objections. We, we get those objections in, it means we can have a public inquiry when the appeal comes in. So we need to make sure that's the first thing, that's the easy thing for all of you can do is be involved in that process. And every process after, we have to have people involved in it. Um, if it comes to the, down to it and um, we, we get to a stage that IGAS may actually go to the Secretary of the State them, him, themselves and put in a, um, a, a, what happened in Lancashire, where we, what the council decides to get over, overruled. Um, we'll probably need funds to, to go to court to challenge these things. So something else we do need from our community is some funds. I don't like doing this. I really don't. It's not. Um, I feel that people need to do this because they feel passionate about it. But sometimes all that people can give is some money. And if you haven't got the time, please do try and make some donations. There's some bucket buckets around and stuff to collect money. Well said. Um, where was he up to? Yeah, we need planners, plotters, social media savvy, or good old-fashioned letter writers and note-takers. This campaign, up and down the country, is filled with old and young. They work together, spreading information on what fracking is and how to slow the process. And there are those who are brave, brave all weathers, out protesting at sites and doing direct action. I'm not a protester. I reject a failed energy policy that endangers our climate, our air quality, and now possibly our water. Our environment is our home. We are united in wanting that safe, whatever age, race, gender, political or apolitical, we have to make a stand. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you very much.